Marie Curie was buried twice. The first time when she died in 1934. But the reason may not be what was originally thought and may surprise you. Before getting into what it is and the mathematics behind that, let's see when was it that she had to be buried the second time. Six decades after her original burial, in 1995, the president of France, François Mitterrand, announced that Marie Curie and her husband Pierre should be moved to Palace du Panthéon in Paris in order to honor their life's work. But it would prove to be no easy task. No reliable information existed in regards to how radioactive the bodies were. So the French office, OPRI, was called to ensure the safe transfer of the bodies. As in, they didn't want any of the workers to catch any radiation. When Curie was buried, it was not known at the time that radioactivity is incredibly dangerous. A New York Times article published in 1934 stated that Madame Curie was buried in a plain oak coffin. But when her body was exhumed, it was found that it was lined with lead. Now, people assume right away that, therefore, her body must have been so dangerously radioactive that even in 1934, it was decided to bury her in a lead-lined coffin. Is that possible? Yes, but another scenario is just as likely. The main purpose of lead is to significantly slow down decomposition. Lead-lined coffins were, and probably still are, reserved for wealthy and important individuals. Diana, for example, was buried in a lead-lined coffin. Considering that Curie won two Nobel Prizes and was an international celebrity of sorts, it wouldn't be surprising that she would be buried in such a coffin. So, when they opened up her lead coffin, just how radioactive was she? How dangerous was it to be around her? And finally, what was it that caused her illness and death? To understand that, let's get into the mathematics. The law of radioactive decay states that the quantity of a radioactive isotope decreases exponentially over time. Radioactive isotopes are versions of elements that have unstable nuclei. This instability causes them to decay over time, releasing radiation in the form of particles or energy. This process continues until the isotopes transform into more stable forms. This can be expressed by the decay equation n of t equals n0 times e to the power of minus lambda t, where n of t is the number of undecayed nuclei at time t, n0 is the initial number of undecayed nuclei at time 0. Lambda is a decay constant, which is specific to each radioactive isotope and represents the probability of decay per unit time. The rate at which nuclei decay is proportional to the number of undecayed nuclei and is described by this differential equation. This indicates that the change in the number of nuclei dn over a small time interval dt is proportional to the current number of nuclei n. To solve this differential equation, we separate variables and integrate. Integrating both sides gives the following, where c is the integration constant. By exponentiating both sides, we obtain this. Since e to the power of c is a constant, we can write it as n0. The half-life T1 half of a radioactive isotope is the time required for half of the radioactive nuclei to decay. It is related to the decay constant this way. As an example, let's say we have a sample of a radioactive substance with an initial quantity of N0 and a known decay constant lambda. To find the quantity of the substance remaining after a certain time T, we use the decay equation. For instance, if N0 is 100 nuclei and lambda is 0.1 per second, after 10 seconds we have this. So about 36.79 nuclei remain undecayed after 10 seconds. Now, Marie Curie primarily worked with the element radium-226, which she famously isolated with her husband Pierre. Measuring its half-life proved to be a struggle at the time. In the 20th century, lack of advanced technology made it difficult to predict accurate half-lives. The half-life of radium-226 was more precisely determined around 1902 by Ernest Rutherford. Here's an example of how he would have calculated it. Suppose you observe the following counts of alpha particles over a series of time intervals. Initial count, 0 hours, 1000 particles. After 24 hours, 950 after 48, 905, and after 72, 860. Using the exponential decay formula, you might calculate lambda as follows. 
Find the best fit for lambda such that the observed decay matches n of t equals 100 times e to the power of minus lambda t. If the fitted value of lambda is 0.00143 per hour, you can calculate the half-life, which approximates to 485 hours, or roughly 20 days. This simple example illustrates the basic method that Rutherford probably used. Although in practice he would need more sophisticated statistical techniques in order to accurately determine the half-life. The calculated half-life of radium is 1,600 years. Curry's personal belongings and scientific equipment are still full of it, making them dangerous to handle. But surprisingly, when she was exhumed, Madame Curie showed surprisingly low levels of radiation. Alpha and beta survey meter measurements, which were taken of the body itself, showed slight contaminations in the bones and feet, hips and skull. 0.2 becquerel per centimeter squared beta and 0.5 becquerel per centimeter squared alpha. Becquerel, named after Henri Becquerel, is the unit of radioactivity in the International System of Units. One becquerel is defined as one decay per second. It indicates how many atoms are decaying and emitting radiation every second in a sample. Per square centimeter specifies the area over which the radiation measurement was taken. When combined with becquerel, as in becquerel per centimeter squared, it tells us the intensity of radioactivity per unit area. Just as a comparison, Madame Curie's notebooks emit 4.17 becquerel per centimeter squared alpha and 5.83 becquerel per centimeter squared beta, a lot more. So how come she has such low levels of radiation? Because of a concept called a biological half-life. When radium is absorbed by our bodies, it doesn't mean it'll stay there for 1,600 years until it completely decays. Our body naturally wants to expel foreign material out. Thus, the concept of biological half-life exists. To take into consideration not only the half-life of the element itself, but also the amount of time our bodies take to get rid of it. Our belongings are not living beings, so they cannot expel the radiation absorbed. What is the exact biological half-life of radium? I don't know. It really depends. Many substances exhibit exponential decay in their concentration within the body. The concentration of the substance can often be modeled with this equation, where C of t is the concentration at time t, C0 is the initial concentration, and k is the decay constant. The decay constant k can be derived from the slope of the natural logarithm of concentration versus time. If you plot ln of c against time, k will be the negative of the slope of this line. The biological half-life t1 half is related to the decay constant by the formula. t1 half is ln of 2 over k, where ln of 2 is approximately 0.693. The calculated half-life needs to be verified against biological processes. It really depends on the individual, plus how the radium was absorbed, for how long and at what age, etc. For example, as suggested by Dr. Richard Tuhi, osteoporosis in menopausal women, aka what Marie Curie probably had, accelerated the elimination of radium from her bones, shortening its biological half-life. Anyway, by seeing how much radium was left in her, it was concluded by OPRI that Marie Curie could not have died from radium-226 poisoning. That is, her health decline could not have been caused by that. She would have had to eat the radium in order to absorb lethal levels. Plus, towards the end of her life, she began handling radium less, and when she did, in a much safer way. Most likely, it was the X-ray machines that she developed in World War I, the Petit Curies, and her way of handling them that caused her illness and eventual passing. It was also suggested that her use of polonium could have caused that, but in the end, it was probably all three reasons combined. If you're curious to know more, check out this video right here. I'm pretty sure you're gonna love it. See you guys there.